name is Brianna Cornell. Um, I am the youngest female finisher of the Badwater 135 Ultra Marathon as of uh, 2015. What inspired you to go to do the Badwater? Well, I ran track and cross country in high school and I've been running with my dad since I was 11. And my senior year of high school, I had known that I always wanted to do a marathon. So I was planning on running a marathon after graduating. But I went and I watched um, this movie with a local running club called Running the Sahara. And it's about these three guys that run across the Sahara Desert in 111 days. And I left the movie feeling really stupid. Like, why didn't I think of that? Why did I think 26.2 is the farthest you could run? It was just the farthest I'd ever heard about anyone doing. Um, so as I got into college, um, I decided that that, I walked away from that and I was like, that's what I want to do. And so I got into college and I started training for ultras. And I actually reached out to Ray Zahab, who was one of the guys who ran across the Sahara Desert. And he was doing a program called Impossible to Possible, I2P, where he takes youth between the ages of 17 and 21 to an exotic location. And you run a marathon or more a day while carrying out some sort of educational project. So like, I went with, Bots uh, I went with I2P to Botswana in 2012. And we ran 50 kilometers a day across the Kalahari Desert while educating about water. And through all of this, I was just absorbing all the information I could through reading like Born to Run or Eat and Run. And in a lot of those books, the Badwater 135 was just referenced over and over and over again. And it's one of those things where it's like a little seed is planted in your head and then it just starts to grow and take hold. And that ultimately became my focus and my main drive to start racing 100 mile races. Especially when I learned that the youngest finishing female had been 23 years old. And I was like, I could totally do that. I've totally been at the advantage of learning about ultra marathoning when I was 18. Um, so I ran my first ultra uh, 50 mile, well, my first ultra was in 2011. Something of my own creation, where I ran 200 miles from Grand Rapids, Michigan to the Mackinac Bridge in five days. And then after that, I learned, oh, there's actually organized events, and I started going to those. Um, so it's kind of been a, a progression, and I crewed and paced out at Badwater for Tony Portera uh, the past two years, and was fortunate enough to get my final qualifying race in this past year, applied, and was somehow accepted. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm out there towing the starting line with all these incredible people who have been my idols since high school. It's been, it's been an adventure. Tell, tell us about 135 miles journey. Um, so I wanted, I wanted the Badwater to be something a lot more special and bigger than myself. Because hey, it's great if you have like an age record for however long it'll last. It I know it'll be broken, but I wanted it to have a lot more meaning. So. Impossible to Possible did so much for me in wanting to pursue ultras and running that I reached out to Impossible to Possible and got a crew together of all former youth ambassadors for I2P. So we had um, Valerie, Holly, Emma, and Ryan who have all gone on different expeditions to like the Atacama, Utah. It was kind of like were these students who went on to these exotic locations and ran ultra distances across the world and we're all coming back together as a team to do one more run across the desert and we worked with Ray and we were able to pull that off so I actually running it I was just inspired by the people who were there to support me and it became that team effort and it was it was perfect uh, one of the different things about the race this year was it went back to a nighttime start it hasn't had a nighttime start in something like 20 years so I was in the second start wave and we started at 9.30 at night. It's really difficult to sleep the day before a race like that when you're really excited. <laughs> and so I think I underestimated how difficult it would be to actually stay awake because typically by the time 24 hours comes around, it's like, and you have, you've had a morning start at a race, you've only gone through one night and you're almost done if you're running 100 miles. But by the time this you were through the first night and the second night was coming around. It's like, okay, I'm just reaching 100 miles now. <laughs> and I just couldn't keep my eyes open into the second night. Um, I had to sleep for an hour or so on the side of the road. I just couldn't keep my eyes open. Um, so I think that was probably the most difficult part for me personally. And I had some stomach problems, but was able to push through those. And I finished. <laughs>
So, so now you finished Badwater. What's, what's next? I would love to be one of those people that goes back to Badwater year after year after year. But there's so many other things that there's so many other races and adventures out there that can be had. Um, so I will always be supportive of Badwater, and I know that I will race it again in the future. And I'll go and I'll crew and support other racers as much as I'm able to. Um, but the time and expense that the race has versus other opportunities that there are, I'm looking into it. Um, right now it's really dependent on um, the vacation time that I can get from work. There's a lot of things on my bucket list. Um, I'd love to do like the Fat Dog 120 or the Victor's Belt in South Africa or Trans Grand Canaria or uh, the Grand to Grand Ultra. Um, but it's all about timing and scheduling and making sure that you are prepared for those. Um, so my hat's in for Western States. Um, I'd like to get in one more 100 miler um, before next year. So that'll, that'll be dependent on where I am in the next month or so. And then if I make it into Western States, great. If I don't, then I'm going to find another A race for next year and it'll be good. Thank you everyone for everyone's support. It's been way beyond anything I could have ever imagined. <laughs> You're such an inspiration to us and a lot of people who followed you. Thanks for talking to us.